crazy before and after, dude. Like, look at this shit. I think it was awesome for him to, you know, be willing to expose this like this and just like put his side by side up there for people to essentially dissect. So, you know, a lot of props to him. What's up guys, Derek, Marplates18.com. Today we're going to be talking about steroids making you old and uh, an example of a before and after of a um, very um, seasoned bodybuilder who actually is a Gorilla Mind athlete and a friend of mine, uh, Vigorous Steve. He had a pretty dramatic um, transformation, not only going from, you know, untrained to being a massive bodybuilder, but then afterwards um, going into PCT and, you know, letting the super physiological mass, you know, like start to fall off as he, uh, you know, um, you know, cleans out and tries to, uh, essentially get to a optimized health status before he then, you know, continues with his bodybuilding endeavors in the future. And obviously when you come off of gear after being on years, blasting and cruising, um, you know, there's going to be significant changes to your physique, not just in like, you know, temporary muscle fullness and, you know, performance outcomes in the gym and whatnot, but your overall like aesthetic appeal takes on a whole new look. And it's largely driven, at least what I speculated by a lot of it being water retention, but also like actual, what I assume to be actual tissue accrual via certain mechanisms that are driven through anabolics, hyperplasia, um, obviously exacerbated significantly with growth hormone and things of this nature. And I actually did a video a while back called keeping your hair versus gaining more muscle with androgenic steroids. And I basically had this, you know, like comparison photo beside a, you know, a dude who just like, if you actually look at this dude's body, it's actually, you know, like, I guess maybe to the average person, they would say this guy's body is better than this guy. But, you know, to a bodybuilder perspective, like this guy makes this guy look like a little dad bod child, to be honest, when they're shirtless beside one another. However, the faces and the hair and the overall just complexion relative to one another and the progression, their skin quality, facial structure, et cetera, has taken on throughout the years. You'll notice in bodybuilders, it gets significantly worse at an accelerated rate and you take on a look that is just not that attractive unfortunately it's almost like the more muscle you gain above and beyond a certain point the worse your face gets and i did another video that was actually fairly popular called the fat head effect caused by gaining muscle it's not just water retention this is something you see very often with some of the top pros in the industry the guys who are chasing significant significant amounts of mass you see kai green he had like a relatively you know, normal, like actually very, I guess, aesthetically pleasing face. And then after, even when he's shredded, he has this significant amount of mass just sitting on his body, but he's, you know, massive. So obviously when you gain mass everywhere, you know, what is, it's not like your head is just going to stay exactly the same and everything else grows. So anyway, this was another one, Justin Compton, when he was essentially, uh, I don't know if he was natural here or if he was like, uh, he had just started training. He was like a newbie at this point. And this was like his first photo shoot. Um, and then this is his face after, like this is him on stage, fully dieted down. And this is, you know, like peak leanness, which is where I sort of came to the conclusion that it wasn't all just water retention because these guys would be fully dieted down, stepping on stage with giant, like bloated looking heads and it was just like the interesting thing about it though is it doesn't seem to be something that if it was all you know like gh permanent growth you wouldn't see this significant regression after these guys come off and lose a bunch of muscle and what you'll often see is these guys when they if they do come off in the future or they go down to therapeutic replacement but more notably the guys who actually come clean off those seem to be the guys that have the most drastic change in their facial progression over the years and they end up looking like you don't even recognize them. Like Dorian Yates, for example, before he even started lifting, you know, like peak, uh, I think I had in this video, actually, let me see if I can uh, find it. So we have like, um, throughout his progression, it was like, you know, he was like the skinny rail kid and his face is just like sharp jawline, you know, lean, nor like, I'm not gonna say n normal, like he's as normal as a normal kid would look, I guess. And then, you know, he has this hollow, you know, 
chiseled face when he's like first gaining mass over the years and eventually he gets to a point where he's put on so much mass that even when he is shredded to the bone, his face has a significant amount of just like extra tissue hanging off of it that is not there when you're younger. Like you seem to gain size, not just on your body, but also on your face. Like this is not the same face you see on the guy when he is a teenager, despite him being probably leaner than he was as, as a teen. And then when he becomes like detrained and like de-saucy, all of a sudden his face shrinks down to, you know, a more, I don't know, normalish looking face. Like it's kind of hard to explain. Like Phil Heath is another great example. This guy, when he was on the come up, his face was, you know, lean, chiseled, but, and like notably the most lean and chiseled before he even started bodybuilding. And then as he, you know, gets progresses, you know, it's still pretty lean, still, still pretty like model-esque um, and looks really good. And then over the years, as he starts to chase the size game, um, it turns into this like, you know, the sort of thing you see with Kai Green almost, like not to the same extent, but it's like his face is way more just fat looking, even when he's on stage and peeled to the bone. And it seems like an unavoidable outcome for a lot of these guys. They'll start off like super, super, you know, normal and just like aesthetic. And then as they gain size over the years, you know, their face like cranks up in mass until they, you know, detrain and or, you know, like get off of the uh, exogenous hormones again. And Justin Compton was uh, probably the most drastic example besides Kai Green, where he looked like, you know, just like chiseled model looking face. Um, here he is at a photo shoot, I guess. And then, you know, however many years later, this is him peeled to the bone um, with, you know, obvious mass on his face, you know? And then as he becomes detrained, like this was him, I think, peak on stage. And, you know, not really representative of what you would think as a guy who was like peeled out of his mind. You would think, you know, like, you would think like jaw, fucking jawline from the gods. You would think like chiseled, you know, cheekbones, chiseled out, like hollowed out fucking cheeks and shit. You would think just like aesthetics, but it does not seem to be the case. And Vigorous Steve, who is one of, uh, the best sources of information, I think, on YouTube, the internet, just in general, for, um, you know, like risk, uh, you know, like a high level bodybuilding knowledge, but also like a very hybrid approach with, uh, you know, being health conscious and whatnot. And, you know, he's one of the few channels that um, I think has like insanely high quality information. Um, he basically recently talked about his uh, experience with um, NAFLD, if you don't know what NAFLD is, it is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and it is something that you can experience after chronic exposure to androgens essentially, not even just oral steroids, but also can be something you develop as a result of exogenous injectables, which a lot of people don't realize is the stress that exogenous androgens can have on your uh, kidneys, liver, etc. regardless of the fact that they're not, you know, like 17 alpha alkylated orals, they are just injectables that are supposed to be, you know, liver friendly. It's not necessarily the case. You know, at super physiological doses of androgens, you're going to have stress on the organs regardless, even if they're not oral. So Steve um, recently decided to, you know, totally clean out so he could just like optimize his health to the max before he, you know, goes into more extreme bodybuilding endeavors, or he may just not anymore because I think he's becoming more, uh, you know, entrepreneurship focused. And it's kind of hard to be like a hybrid of like extreme bodybuilding because this guy is like, He's not just a guy who like recreate, like he does recreationally bodybuild, but he's also a guy who's like fucking massive. Like he could, you know, he's like does off seasons, like actual like pro bodybuilders essentially with the amount of commitment he has to his, you know, diet training, um, et cetera. He doesn't push the drugs as hard as, you know, some of these open bodybuilders and whatnot, but he still, you know, it's enough of a time investment and energy investment that it takes, you know, it's a big toll on your, uh, no matter how smart you are, it's going to, you know, have some sort of toll that, you know, you I will have to deal with in some capacity down the line. And he is being uh, proactive about it rather than waiting till it accumulates to some ridiculous thing he has to deal with years later. So that is why he is uh, PCTing right now. And a lot of people have been commenting on his face over the past uh, couple months here. And this is the before and after he posts right side by side where he is, uh, I believe there's like 20 to 30 pounds of difference between these two videos. And obviously you can see 
how you know inflated this guy is, how fucking nitrogen retentive and saucy he is here. I believe he was on uh, 200 milligrams of Primo, 200 or 250 tests at this point, a couple I use of GH, a little bit of Lantus, a pretty reasonable and like conservative protocol, but significantly, you know, like more than enough for guy to sustain the super physiological amount of mass that he has accrued and, uh, you know, support his uh, training intensity and whatnot and um, hold this amount of size that you simply cannot hold with endogenous, you know, like 600 nanogram per deciliter test levels. So expectedly, you know, he's lost a decent amount of size, but it's nothing he couldn't get back if he really wanted to down the line once he has fully, you know, achieved his goals and whatnot. But the thing that a lot of people have been pointing out is how much younger he looks after coming off of the gear. So like, as you see playing through this, he has this side-by-side -side for the entire video where he shows one of his old videos. Like this is only, this is only like a few months ago or something like that. And look at the difference in his face, you know? It's interesting because it's not like there's that much of a difference in like skin quality or anything. Like maybe, I don't know, it's, it's hard to put your finger on it, but you can just tell he looks much younger. And is this all boiled down to, he does a very good explanation, kind of like scientifically breaking down what kind of mechanisms go into the, um, what he believes to be the reason why bodybuilders look older when they're on like heavy duty cycles and whatnot. Part of it is the water retention, which I also think, you know, can contribute significantly. It also just makes you look fucking horrible <laughs> if you're, you know, just, it's interesting though, because it's like, it almost seems like it's unavoidable to some extent because these guys that are holding, it seems like the more mass you hold, the more just like permanent tissue overall there is that is filled out. Like if you are carb loaded and stepping on a bodybuilding stage and you have like all this intramuscular, everything just like popping, it's not like your face is going to be sucked down and not be like high, like super compensated, I would think, the same way as your muscles are. Like everything is connected and you're super compensating fucking everywhere. And it's not like you can just have like a Skeletor peeled fucking face and then have like a super compensated bicep. Like everything sort of distributes in a similar way. And this is what you see with the bodybuilders in a linear fashion. It seems like the more muscle they gain, the harder it is for them to get that sucked in. Like model looking face is sort of like out the window after a while. You know, it seems like, like natties have the best opportunity to maintain like a model looking, you know, like pretty boy face, I guess. And like the more mass you gain, it seems like the harder it is to uh, keep that look. And here, it's not like his skin is like anti-age. It's not like he got Botox. It's not like he did anything crazy like that. It's just the sheer mass being lost, the intracellular fluid retention and whatnot. He outlines how he hypothesizes that the water retention actually exacerbates the appearance of wrinkles and fine lines, which, you know, you would think they like, it would fill out, you know, if you have all this fucking water in there, that's like literally the point of using like hyaluronic acid and whatnot, not in like in the tissue itself, but, you know, people will inject hyaluronic acid fillers to, you know, super compensate the area with water, I guess, and use these topical hyaluronic acid serums and whatnot. But it doesn't seem to be like the way the water retention seems to work via anabolics is, I don't know, like he speculates how it seems to uh, make things appear more obvious rather than hiding them in a way that is more uh, aesthetically pleasing. And he thinks it makes you look older. A lot of people do agree that, you know, just objectively, not even just in the comment section of the video or anything like this. The thing that actually prompted him to do this video is how many people were saying in real life, like where he lives, like, hey, dude, you look so much better now. Hey, your face looks so much better. You look so much younger. So it's like, it's such a trade off because it's like your face looks better when you're like untrained essentially, but just a lean athletic guy. But then when you're on the sauce train and you are like massive and at your like most hard worked for physique with the most shredded mass on you. Even when you're fucking peeled, your face is not as good as it could be when you're like just a lean like soccer player, essentially. Like, I don't think it's a coincidence that like the best looking dudes in sports are like, like soccer players and guys that are not like heavily muscle bound and whatnot. But, and it's just like, I don't know. It's these guys are more, uh, like I said, there's a trade-off though too. Like, do you want it to be perceived as like a scrawny, like little boy with like no fucking mass? Or do you want to have like a hybrid of the two? Or do you just want to be on the hyper extreme, extreme of masculine? He goes into some other uh, theories about what may happen with uh, how androgens um, induce their effects and whatnot, and how that, you know, downstream mechanisms that may be at play here. But 
basically the summarization is that steroids will make you look older, but it is largely a reversible process um, if you haven't been, I guess, chronically abusing them for a duration of time where you would otherwise have looked older anyways. You know what I mean? Like he does it, he's basically outlining how it's not going to like significantly accelerate things to a point where if you came off them, you would just stay at that same amount. You would be able to turn back the clock a little bit and kind of like de-age yourself from at least the things that are driven through temporary mechanisms of action. Cause it's like some of this stuff is only there because the androgens are keeping them there. Like some of the, the fucking mineral retention, the water retention, etc. Some of this stuff is only present because of the anabolics keeping them in that environment. And then once you, you know, remove that from the system, everything, you know, goes away. And then all of a sudden there's some drastic change. Like it's almost like when you go on a keto diet, for example, all of a sudden you drop like fucking seven pounds of water in the first couple of weeks. And all of a sudden your face looks like hella sucked down. You know, there's like a similar effect, it seems, with anabolics where it's like you get that. And I think that's largely what drives, you know, the first couple of weeks, somebody starts testosterone, you gain, you know, like five to 10 pounds of what appears to be like very clean, lean, just like fucking muscle popping, <laughs> the skin tearing, fucking sick looking weight. And it's just like temporary nitrogen retention, some intramuscular water glycogen, et cetera, it's not necessarily that you gain five to 10 pounds of muscle in those two weeks. Like a lot of this stuff is like temporary, you know, stuff going on. So the thing that I do think, and I'm not going to like dissect any of his uh, points or anything, like uh, they all made total sense to me. And I highly recommend you go watch the video if you want a good in-depth explanation, because he is, like I said, one of the most knowledgeable guys on YouTube, in my opinion, about bodybuilding and as well as uh, safer practice models and whatnot for bodybuilding. But um, I think some of the like inflammation, oxidative stress, et cetera, is stuff that is going to, you know, accelerate the aging process regardless of like, obviously that stuff is almost like segregated from the temporary stuff. The temporary stuff is going to make you look older by the sheer way anabolics cause their effects in the body, but the actual negative consequences, like on a cellular level, I don't even know exactly what I'm trying to say here, but some of the stuff is like, will kill you quicker, in my opinion, as well as age you quicker. So when guys are saying, for example, why do all bodybuilders, you know, who are like aggressively pursuing bodybuilding look like they're like 40 when they're in their 20s? I think it largely comes down to the diet model that they follow in conjunction with the drugs they're using and the amount of time you're like redlining your body and constantly spiking mTOR, like you're never in a state of autophagy, you're never in a cellular cleanup phase, you're never cleaning up the mess and the oxidative stress is just like fucking rampant in a lot of these bodybuilders, not Vigorous Steve, like Vigorous Steve stays on top of his shit and that's why I think he has such a drastic, you know, like de-aging process when he comes off, but for a lot of bodybuilders, they'll prematurely age themselves into like their 40s in their 20s just because of the way they don't take care of themselves. Like there's no fucking antioxidants in their diet whatsoever. Their diet models are micronutrient deficient. Um, they're using heavily abusive dosages of androgens they, that they shouldn't be long-term. And it also really like compounds and I think just accelerates the aging process on top of all of the temporary stuff that Steve outlines in his video. And it does, the net result of that is like significantly accelerated aging and getting you to your death much quicker. Like it's not, I don't think it's a coincidence either that when you have, uh, I forget what it was, maybe it was like worms or like rodents or whatever. When you have like IGF-1 knockout animals, their life is extended, you know? And one of the uh, most promising um, fields of research is kind of seeing the interplay with IGF-1 and how it may uh, accelerate aging in individuals and whatnot. And, you know, this is why, partially why metformin is seen as such a promising anti-aging drug i'm not saying to do it or anything by the way i'm just saying like a lot of this stuff is sort of like expediting your body's process of it like the best way to put it actually in layman's terms would be the candle the saying the candle that burns the brightest you know burns out the quickest and i probably just fucking butchered that so let me look up what that is the candle that burns twice as bright burns half as long yeah that was the saying the flame that burns twice as bright burns half as long. So I think that's essentially what's going on with bodybuilding. I think these guys are redlining their body with super physiological amounts of androgens, GH, insulin, etc. It's all very pro-aging, pro-inflammatory, pro-oxidative stress, and it gets you to that point of, 
you know, you're basically like condensing more years of like metabolizing fucking food, doing a bunch of processes in the body that are above and beyond. Like you're basically working for like two people in one when you're like a 300 pound bodybuilder eating this much food and taking this much drugs. The amount of shit your body has to do, the amount of stuff your heart has to do, the amount of stuff your lungs have to do, the amount of stuff your organs have to do, it's like twice the workload capacity of a normal human. So expectedly, I would think those things are going to get taxed at the same rate at which they are working relative to a normal individual. And I think it's also why guys who weigh more and are taller are more likely to die quicker than somebody who is tiny and weighs very little because they have less actual like requirement to support that their physiologic functions. And then this massive fucking behemoth of a dude has massive requirements and energy expenditure and blah, blah, blah. And just all the processes is more stress on his organs than the next guy. So will steroids age you? Yeah, for sure. But you know, some of the stuff is probably temporary too, like Steve outlined. Um, and I recommend you go watch this video on it. It was very good. And it is uh, a subject that I think, uh, you know, definitely needs to be highlighted because a lot of people don't understand, in my opinion. Uh, a lot of people think that, uh, you know, there's GH and anabolics and testosterone, blah, blah, blah. It's all like, it's all like youthful hormones and it's all the fountain of youth. And when you take this shit, you just look like way younger and better. And it's like, it's not necessarily the case, guys, especially at super physiological dosages, like maybe at therapeutic replacement. It's a bit, it's a different story, obviously. But when you get into like bodybuilder territory and the diet models and, you know, training practices and just overall lifestyle and drug exposure, you know, it's a bit of a different story. So anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Um, any and all comments are appreciated because they help the algorithm. Um, and, uh, you know, check out Vigor Steve. The video was very good in my opinion and uh, very like crazy before and after dude. Like, look at this shit. It was awesome for him to, you know, be willing to expose this like this and just like put his side by side up there for people to essentially dissect. So, you know, a lot of props to him. A lot of people wouldn't put up a before and after basically like showing you know, they're what may be perceived to be flaws in their, especially their face of all things, like not just the physique, like it's one thing for bodybuilders to get critiqued on their physique, but for him to put out this video talking specifically about his face is very, very uh, um, admirable in my opinion as an educational moment. So a lot of kudos for that and drop him a like on the video um, to support his channel and then drop a like on mine to support my channel and whatnot. And um, like, subscribe, uh, check out the blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchu, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below my TRT clinic, uh, Gorilla Mind, Nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode pre workout formulas. I designed myself from scratch. Um, I recommended blood test panels, anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.